And it's very sad. I mean, Munich, you know, I know Steven Spielberg and I like him and I understand what he was doing there. He was trying to be sensitive. But the trouble is that Munich is the word for appeasement. I don't know whether you remember, but there was a prime minister in England called Neville Chamberlain. And Neville Chamberlain signed the Munich Accord with Adolf Hitler, giving Hitler most of uh, Eastern Europe, or Czechoslovakia and other places. It was appeasement. And he thought, we appease Hitler, and he's going to stop attacking. Well, Munich makes heroes out of the terrorists. And the one Israeli who's fighting against the terrorists, by the end of it, he drops out. He becomes a man without a country because he realizes these terrorists are human beings. Yes, they are human beings, but they're human beings who are intent on killing these Israeli athletes and destroying their lives, and they need to be responsible for it. So you forgot all of justice. Now, why did we forget justice? Because we forgot the Ten Commandments, Thou shalt not kill. So the best movie of that bunch is a movie that's now on the side of terrorism. Not that there aren't good people, you know, because I've been to Israel many times and there are good Christians over there, there are good people in every area of Israel, but uh, to paint the picture of the terrorists as being good is wrong. And then it goes downhill from there. And unfortunately, these people are highly confused. Don't go see them. An average Oscar nominee Rhonda will add about $60 million to the box office. Last year, a little movie got Best Picture, which was a pro-euthanasia movie. Now, what I mean by that is that during the years of uh, Adolf Hitler, he had a minister of propaganda, Goebbels, who did a movie exactly the same plot, which led to the laws that allowed the extermination of six million Jews. It was exactly the same plot. You can get it in a, in a production by Channel 4 in England called Selling Murder. They sold murder to the German people. And the movie last year came in $8 million because most people didn't want to see it. It was depressing. It was about murder, euthanasia. By the end of the Oscars, it got up to about 60 or $70 million. It added more money. So you need to watch out that you don't get seduced by this small coterie of people who are willing to be the bureaucrats who are working behind the scenes. How are the Oscar nominations chosen? Because why is it this group of, of movies <laughs> well, that are the least watched and, as you say, the baddest of the bunch? <laughs> because they're chosen by a group of people who are, who are so-called artsy, unfortunately, who are in the bureaucratic system. You know, the studio heads are in a different position. The studio heads, whether they're... Um, Christian, Jewish, uh, uh, Japanese for Sony or whatever would like to have movies that are successful. This article and the article in the LA Times said, so good we've gotten away from fluff. Well, most people want to go out and be entertained. I want to go out and see Chronicles of Narnia and see Aslan resurrected and see good news. Most people want fluff. They want a little entertainment. They're not going to a movie theater to get head over the head by a mallet. So the fact of the matter is the movie studios know that. You know, none of these movies, uh, I think except for Munich, came out of a major studio. Some of them are completely revisionist history. They're complete lies about history. Unfortunately, then the teachers, I was talking to the teachers at a very elegant school in, in L.A., and they were using some of the movies from the past as history lessons. And I said, but this is historically inaccurate. The one movie... I said they didn't even have longbows at the time of Gladiator. Longbows came in in the Battle of Agincourt. They didn't know basic history, and these are the history professors using it for advanced history. So these movies infect every aspect of society, and if the child forgets history, he's doomed to repeat it, and we'll have another Neville Chamberlain operating toward appeasement in the halls of Munich, and we'll be on the road to ruin again. Well, the Academy may judge movies by a different standard than you do. Uh, but in Movie Guide, you use a very specific criteria. Uh, break it down for us. Well, we do two th uh, We look at a lot of elements in Movie Guide, but basically they boil down to two sides of the equation. One, we look at the entertainment value. And there's some movies that we say are very entertaining, but they're very dark and mean and horrible, and you don't want to send, take, you don't want to go see them, let alone your, let your kids go see them. On the other side, we look at acceptability. And when we look at acceptability, we're looking at the stages of development of a children. You know, on the cover of this movie guide, of course, is The Passion of the Christ. But we said that The Passion of Christ was a, as a negative mm -hmm. one, not because we didn't give it the award, but because you shouldn't let your three and a half year old yes. child go see it. It's too, in fact, my wife walked out because she doesn't like that much violence. I'm so I, embarrassed I didn't go see mm -hmm. it because I knew 
that I couldn't watch. Well, I loved it. And, and a lot of people came to Christ. But we want to say, you know, one little boy, let me put this in another way. A friend of mine who was a Boy Scout leader uh, said that he had one little boy who kept saying, I want to lead. And he said, okay, if you can carry my 90-pound pack, you can lead. The boy walked about three feet, fell over and said, I think I'll wait until I get older. So for the passion of the Christ, we say that it should be 13, 14 and up. So we're very careful about the stages of development. We look at the, and I could use the technical terms, the cognitive development of kids and the concrete stage and the solipsistic stage, the sensation stage, but forget that because your audience won't pick up. <laughs> but we're very careful about the stages of development and we're very careful about theology. Now there are a lot of sites out there that are supposedly doing faith-based reviewing which don't care about theology. So they'll give an award to a movie that's pro, you know, God bless them, Muslim. Now, if you're pro-Muslim, you should go to that site. But we're, we're very concerned about having a traditional Judeo-Christian worldview, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, with the grace of God being there in a redemptive storyline. And the good news is there are more movies that fit in that category. Well, you mentioned how disappointed you are with this year's nominations for animated oh, films. It breaks my heart. But I want to show a clip of a movie that you absolutely loved. I loved it, too. The Incredibles. What a beautiful It was movie. an incredible movie. Let's take a short look at this clip. 